Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds. If you've been watching the site lately, it's been about three weeks since we updated a video. During that time, Maggie and I have been on the road making a couple presentations in Massachusetts, a couple TV shows, and some, um, and some radio and print. That'll be on the site over the next couple of, um, couple of weeks to um, inform you of what we've been up to. But something happened last night that I really wanted to share with you right now. I got an email last night from Ian Goddard. And Ian is um, a longtime watcher of this site and uh, has done some really great analysis in the past as well. He took a look at an old TEPCO video. And Tokyo Electric had gone into the Unit 3 fuel pool just once. You remember that Unit 3 is the, um, is the reactor that's blown to smithereens. Um, the video showed a lot of damage. But Ian Goddard was able to find one spot that there's clearly something that appears to be discernible. It looks like the handle of a BWR fuel bundle. Now, Ian compares that bundle to other bundles which were looked at over in Unit 4, and it's pretty clear to me and a couple other nuclear engineers I've shown it to that this might be a single nuclear fuel bundle in the Unit 3 fuel pool. Now, raises more questions than it answers. First off, there should be a lot of bundles there. Yet, obviously, there's only one in this picture. Where are the other bundles? The other part of the question is, this should be under about 30, 25 feet of water. And it's not. It's very near to the surface. So what's happened to that particular bundle that it's, um, or to the water level in the pool that have caused it to come in such close contact with, um, uh, with atmosphere. Well, like I said, it raises more questions than it, uh, than it answers, but I really do want to thank Ian Goddard for discovering this and passing it on. Um, if you have any comments or questions or, or thoughts about what you think it might be, um, please send in through the comment section on the website. Thanks. We'll get back to you soon. Japan's industry ministry will carry out additional safety inspections called stress tests on nuclear power plants to reassure the public. Industry Minister Bandi Kayeda told reporters on Wednesday that the stress tests are a response to concerns expressed by residents living near nuclear plants. Several plants have had operations suspended since the March disaster. The so-called stress tests on nuclear reactors were introduced by the European Union following the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. In Japan, they will involve raising the magnitude of simulated quake and tsunamis and to check their effects on the plants. I want the stress test to include the list prepared by the Nuclear Safety Commission and also reflect local residents' concerns. Kaeda said all Japanese nuclear plants will be tested, starting with those already undergoing routine checks. He said he aims to accelerate the schedule of this work. Some municipalities could oppose the resumption of the nuclear plants until details of these tests are clarified, a scenario that would affect electricity supply over the summer. My doctor had been asking me to come in and take a stress test. <laughs> I didn't know what that was. I'd never had one. Every test I'd ever had had been stressful, really. <laughs> Japanese researchers have found that microbes could help remove cesium from water and soil, raising hopes for their use in decontamination efforts around the Fukushima plant. For 10 years, a team led by Professor Ken Sasaki of Hiroshima Kokusai Gakuin University has been studying ways to remove metals using microbes called phototrophic bacteria. Such removal is possible because negative ions on the microbes attract positively charged metals. The team recently experimented with 2.5 grams of cesium mixed in water and about 90 grams of microbes. The cesium dropped to one-twelfth of its original density in 24 hours and was gone by the third day. The same effect was confirmed in soil. The team says the microbes could very likely be used to remove radioactive cesium from around the plant. We'd like to test our method in Fukushima Prefecture and try decontaminating the soil and water. E.T. Home phone.
E.T. phone home. Japan's Science and Technology Ministry says radioactive strontium has not shown up in tests of the seabed off the northern Pacific coast. The test follows last month's detection of the radioactive material in the seabed near the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Radioactive strontium is feared because it can accumulate in bones if inhaled and cause cancer. Radioactive strontium was not found this time in samples taken at six locations between 10 and 30 kilometers off a section of the Pacific coast. The area includes Fukushima Prefecture along with two prefectures to the south and north. But an independent body advising the ministry, the Nuclear Safety Commission, pointed out that the current system cannot detect amounts below 0.8 becros of strontium per kilogram of soil. More evidence is needed to prove that no strontium has reached these points this time. We advise the ministry to use a method that can detect smaller amounts of this radioactive substance. The fisheries ministry is also testing marine products caught off Ibaraki and Hiba prefectures near Tokyo. But so far, strontium has not been detected. Is it safe? <laughs> I tell you, I can't do that. Concerns over food safety stemming from the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant are growing in Tokyo, about 200 kilometers from the crippled facility. A group of parents of school children have petitioned the mayor of the city's most populous ward to take measures to ensure that school lunches are safe. The parents met the mayor of Setagaya ward Nobuto Hosaka on Wednesday to submit a letter listing their concerns. The parents have asked the ward to not only set up a system to check for radiation in vegetables, fish, milk and other foodstuffs used in school lunches, but also to procure these items only from limited areas. They also handed the mayor a petition with about 6,000 signatures in support of their requests. I understand the parents' concerns. The mayor told them that no milk has been found tainted with radiation so far and that the harvest areas of foodstuffs will be disclosed at all schools in the world. Hosaka also promised to convey their request to the national government. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. The trauma for victims of Japan's tsunami disaster is being compounded by the fear that their abandoned homes are being robbed. A group of suspected looters has been arrested in the Fukushima evacuation zone as their victims continue to queue for basic necessities four months after disaster struck. As Sean Thomas reports, the toll on those left sifting through what remains of their lives is immense. As the waves crash against a damaged seawall on the Japanese coast, volunteers work tirelessly to clean up the debris and bring some sense of normalcy back to the area. I want to tell people we need more help, more supplies, and things are still bad here. Beyond the physical destruction, there is a distressing psychological factor as well. The city of Iwaki is right on the edge of the 20-kilometer exclusion zone for radiation contamination. In fact, in a recent study by Japan's Nuclear Safety Commission, 45% of 1,000 children tested in Iwaki and neighboring cities have tested positive for thyroid radiation exposure, a figure that has parents appalled. In fact, in a recent study by Japan's Nuclear Safety Commission, 45% of 1,000 children tested in Iwaki and neighboring cities have tested positive for thyroid radiation exposure, a figure that has parents appalled. 
The government has researched the criteria for safety and are not concerned with the consequences. Their reaction is only to help the government save face, but they don't actually take care of the damage and the people here. First, there was the earthquake, then the devastating wave which rushed in and destroyed this part of the coastal city of Iwaki. Also, there are the nuclear radiation waves that are coming into this area as well. The volunteers that are coming in to rebuild this city certainly have their work cut out for them. But just like the city itself, the people who live here, the community, they need to have their spirits rebuilt as well. <laughs> In an effort to keep the community emotionally strong, organizers have brought this acting troupe in from Tokyo. They say their goal is to provide something beyond simple entertainment. We have a certain Japanese pride, and in this destructive situation, I would like to bring good things and present the spirit of Japan and Japanese pride by bringing people together and making people smile. Through that shared community experience, there is a sense of hope that the city of Iwaki can indeed recover. The convenience store was totally closed and it's reopened, which gives you a feeling that life is coming back. And with an understanding that there is still much more work that needs to be done, the people here are working to keep their community together. Uh, I just want them to stay where they want. And if I can be help of it, then uh, I keep doing it. Rebuilding the city one step at a time. In Iwaki City, Japan, Sean Thomas, RT. I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth.